Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. This is our Arsenal versus Leicester City preview. Monday night football this week. Um, in case you can't tell by my croakier than usual voice, uh, I've been hit by a bout of the man flu. It's really taken the wind out of my sails this week. Um, really knocked me for six and, and has played a part in the messing up of our show schedule. That and of course the international break. But do not fear. We're back. Uh, as always, we've released two podcasts this week, this being the second. The first is an interview with Arsenal cult hero Perry Groves. That is available now on all our platforms, so do check that out. Um, yeah, so uh, let's look ahead to Monday night's fixture. So the good news is the international break is over, but the bad news is we've got to wait until Monday to see our boys in action. Well, I guess it depends how you look at it, doesn't it? Um, I guess Monday is the shittest day of the week um, for most people. So at least having Monday Night Football to look forward to uh, could potentially get you through the day. I know it will get me through the day. Uh, so maybe it's not so bad after all. Um, looking ahead to the fixture, uh, there is some injury news. Some updates have been provided by Mr. Unai Emery in his press conference, which took place on Thursday. Um Let's have a quick look. Okay, so Unai was asked about having to play on a Monday. Um, and he did say that he prefers to play Saturday or Sunday. Uh, but I guess it gives you the advantage for more time to prepare for the match. That's one positive. These are Unai Emery's words, by the way. Um, after we're going to play Thursday, we're going to play Sunday. Also, two matches very quickly after Leicester. For me, it's not an excuse because we are preparing for Monday. Um, he stresses the importance of the game and says after winning six games in the Premier League, we need to continue to be demanding in each match and think about the next match as the most important. Um, so full focus there from Unai Emery. Um, he was also asked about Aaron Ramsey, uh, spoke about um, Ramsey's comments, which suggested that he wanted to stay till the end of the season. And he was asked if that's good news. Now, Unai Emery said for me, January is very far away. I'm thinking about Monday's game first. I want every player to stay okay with the mentality to prepare to play and be together to win. Um, he was then asked if, if Ramsey could still stay at Arsenal. Is there a future for the player at the club? And he said, it's the same, my answer. My focus is on every match, the football. The future is tomorrow. My reason, I explain to every player and to you also, I want the mentality for the next match. Individual things are not for me to speak about now. Um, of course, the Ramsey questions just kept on coming thick and fast. And he was asked if Ramsey is still part of his plans. Now, Emery said, I want his performance like the other players. For example, in the last match, he started on the bench. Then he played 25 minutes with this performance. On Monday, it's the same if he starts in the first 11 or on the bench to come with a focus for this match to help us. It's not different than it is for the other players. Um, so Unai shutting those ones down uh, really quickly. Um, he was also asked about um, some other bits and pieces, which I'm not going to go through. But if you do head over to football.london, you can uh, read the full press conference there. Um, you can read all the comments and, and I'm sure you can watch it back too. Um, but in terms of injury news and updates, and let's put the Ramsey thing to one side for a minute. Petr Cech is getting better from his injury. Um, but he's not training with the group, but I think he's very close to start with us. That's what Emery had to say on Petr Cech. Um, what else was he asked? Let's have a quick look. Aiden Z Maitland-Niles is back in training, and he did confirm that Socrates will likely miss out on Monday night. And now, I've got a funny story about that, actually, because um, I actually, funnily enough, watched Greece against Finland, or Finland versus Greece, whatever you want to call it, so while the rest of the country was watching England uh, absolutely blow Spain away in that first half, I decided to watch uh, Finland against Greece. Now, not for any other reason other than, you know, I'm from a Greek background and I, I felt like, you know, I'll, I'll sit and watch it. You know, something different. Once England were 2-0 up particularly, I thought this is done and dusted for the time being anyway. Keep, I'll keep an eye on it and see if things change and flick back. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to a game that's a little bit more tight a little bit more competitive so that's what I did um, and you know from watching the first half there was absolutely no sign 
of Socrates being injured whatsoever. So when the teams emerged for the second half and the commentator announced that he'd been substituted, I was in shock. I thought, why has he been taken off here? Is there an injury problem? And, you know, is it something else? Like, we don't really know. The commentators didn't really know. Um, and uh, the, the change was made immediately at the break. So, you know, I took to Twitter, as you do, and I, I tweeted from the Chronicles of Aguna account saying that Socrates had gone off injured. Um, and about 10 minutes later, I, I had a quick glance at my phone and my inbox was popping off like like I've never seen it before. You know, my DMs on the Chronicles of Aguna account are open, um, so anyone can get in touch at any time, uh, which is how I like it. But you know, my, my screen just filled up with push notifications of inbox messages. Um, and so I thought, oh, what's happened here? Let's have a quick look. And basically, my inbox was inundated with people calling me a liar, a fucking moron. Um, they accused me of trying to stir shit to get a reaction on Twitter and so on and so forth. And that I was a liar because, in fact, Socrates was still on the pitch. Now, I must admit, it, this took me aback a little bit and, and I did for a couple of minutes think, shit, have I got this wrong? So obviously watching closely in the game and, you know, I, I, I took a closer look and, and kept tabs on the game a little bit more closely than I had been because let's be fair, it was a pretty shit game and it wasn't all that gripping. And I decided to go over to live score to see if in fact I had made a mistake. Now, I was pretty sure at this point that I hadn't, but of course... You always want to check before you go off on social media defending yourself. So that's what I did. And, and on live score, it said Socrates was still on the pitch. So I thought, Jesus, how could I have made such a monumental fuck up? I watched the game for another five minutes and I thought, no, he's not in the center of that defense. He's not there. He's definitely not there. And Greece conceded a goal, actually, almost straight after the break. And you could tell... Um, from those replays in particular that he definitely wasn't at centre back so I decided to go on to UEFA.com after all it is the UEFA Nations League and I, I thought their coverage would be pretty reliable and on their coverage sure as hell Socrates had gone off as a substitute so that made me feel a lot better I was now certain that I hadn't got it wrong and in fact live score had got it wrong so I replied to a load of these messages you know as you do I should have just left them really but you know, particularly when you know you're in the right, you, you want to make the point. So that's what I did. I screenshotted UEFA.com's uh, coverage and I, I sent it to as many people uh, as I could get to in my inbox. And uh, I actually tweeted live score saying, Oi, sort it out because I'm getting inundated with abuse here for your fuck up, basically. And it's not fair. Um, Surely it didn't get a response from, from live score immediately, which I was a bit disappointed in because normally when you tweet sort of big companies or big brands, they sort of get back to you ASAP. I'm sure they have people monitoring this sort of thing. They don't want bad publicity. And so they're quick to, to rectify things. And it wasn't until the next day when I got a tweet from live score saying, hi, according to our thing, Socrates did go off as a sub. And I looked at it again and it, he, it, sh it was showing correctly. So I replied saying, you know, this is incorrect. You obviously corrected, this was incorrect, sorry. You obviously corrected this afterwards. Um, you know, and just acknowledgement of your error is fine. You know, everybody makes mistakes. I've got no problem with that. But, you know, I wanted Live Score to tell me that in fact they had got it wrong. And that's, that's fine. You know, as humans do it, human errors, these things happen. But, you know... I was a bit disappointed in some of the abuse I got, to be honest. You know, you can question it, no problem. You can call me whatever name you want, but, you know, is it really necessary when, in fact, I'm watching the game and let's be frank, how many of you were actually watching Finland versus Greece when England were away to Spain? Not very many. So the moral of the story is don't rely on the Live Score app. Um, do check other sources if you're not sure. And uh, there's no better source than your eyes at the end of the day. Right, turning my attention back to Monday's game. Um, after the break, I'm going to be joined by a very special guest and we'll be looking um, to get the download on Leicester City from one of their own. But first, 
just some of my brief thoughts on, on Leicester City. Uh, Claude Puel, obviously the manager. Now, I think he's a manager who's been unfairly criticised at times. I think not, uh, last season, Leicester City ended up finishing ninth. And the season before at Southampton, he finished eighth and guided them to a League Cup final where they were robbed by Manchester United. Uh, surprise, surprise. But, you know, he his playing style was often criticised. And I think it's a little bit uh, unfair. I think he likes to play on the counter-attack. That's understandable. He's very pragmatic. He, he likes to work in a certain way, but he does achieve results. If you look at his finishes in the Premier League, you can't really knock him considering the clubs he's, he's managed. They're not particularly big budget clubs, um, you know, and, and I think he's, he's overachieved in most cases. And at times he's just done exactly what is expected of him. So to knock him is, is really unfair. Um, you know, Leicester are 10th at the moment. They've got 12 points on the board, four wins, four defeats so far. Um, but yeah, I, I'd i be a bit wary of Leicester. You know, we know that they can hurt us on the counter-attack. Um, they did give us a really good game at the Emirates last season, didn't they? Um, you know, uh, we just about won that. It was the first game of the season. Uh, Jamie Vardy caused us all sorts of problems, and I expect that to be the case again. So, you know, it's something we need to be aware of. Uh Going back to Arsenal for a minute, you know, Lauren Koscielny is back involved with the squad. He's, he's been quite heavily involved, seems to be ahead of schedule. But, you know, I, I don't want the club to rush him back. Um, I think we've got three capable centre-halves at the moment. And I say capable based on their performances so far this season. There's been improvement from Mustafi. Socrates has looked pretty good. Um, and of course, Holdings looked fairly comfortable when he's come in. So I wouldn't be in a rush to bring Koscielny back let him recover properly. This is a serious injury he's been laid off from. He's spoken of the sort of uh, mental impact that it had on him watching France win the World Cup. So let's take our time with that one. There's no rush. Um, based on what I know about Leicester City, my starting 11 would be as follows. Uh, Leno in goal, Bellerin, Mustafi holding Montreal, the back four. Uh, that partnership of Xhaka Torreira in the middle of the park that's flourished of late. Um Ozil is, is apparently fit and, and back in the squad and will be available. So he would play for me, as would Aaron Ramsey, given his lack of involvement uh, in the international break. So hopefully he should be fresh. I know he's had a couple of twins, so congratulations to the Ramsey family. And he's probably not had all that much sleep, but um, I'd still throw him in there. And then Aubameyang uh, to operate from the left wing and Lacazette up top. Um yeah, so that's what I'm going with. I'm going to take a short break, and when I'm back, I'll be joined by a, a Leicester City fan, a very well-known Leicester City fan. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Enjoying what you've heard so far? If so, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave us a review on iTunes. Joining me on the line is Leicester City fan extraordinaire Lee Chappie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna, my friend. How you doing? Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. And, you know, as we've been doing this season, we've been trying to get fans from the opposition to help out in our preview shows. And it's even better if we can get a Leicester City player. We tried for Jamie Vardy. We got Lee Chappie, the Jamie Vardy lookalike. And if you don't believe me, <laughs> check him out on Twitter at Lee underscore Chappie. Mate, you are a spitting image of Jamie Vardy. I couldn't believe when I saw the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it all sort of started when we won the league, really, probably a week before. But uh, yeah, I got onto the team bus with, with Les when we won the Prem and got on the front page of about 15 newspapers worldwide. <laughs> and uh, from then on, I sort of got booked for parties and events and TV spots and adverts and you name it, I've done it, right? And now, obviously, part of a 100% LCFC. You can follow us at 100LCFC on Twitter and Facebook. Do check them out, guys. Do check them out. Now, Lee, we're here to talk about next week's game, uh, Monday Night Football, Arsenal versus Leicester at the Emirates Stadium under the floodlights. Tell us a little bit about Leicester's season so far um, so we can sort of gauge where you guys are at and, and we can try and work out what's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a bit of a strange start. Um, in, in terms of what I was expecting, I, I thought we was we was going to be getting a few, probably a bit more points than what we've got. But um, 
Yeah, it's been it's been a bit rocky because the first game I think we completely outplayed Man United at Old Trafford. I mean, now we're saying that now. I mean, a lot of people have outplayed Man United at Old Trafford. <laughs> But um, like in, in general, though, you know, you don't, you're not supposed to outplay Man United, Old Trafford, you know, but it's not meant to happen. And uh, we did, but we lost. And uh, I don't know, it sort of started the season like that, and it just stayed like that, like quite wonky. Um, we seem to, we seem, I don't know, it's hard to explain. We seem to smash the the weaker sides. Um, but really struggle with like the teams that we should be beating. Like I'm not saying Everton are a worse team than us, because um, I think they're not. They're probably on the same sort of level as what our owners are aiming for, which is like you know an established Premier League side. Yeah. Um, but they're the teams you need to win, you know. And losing against Everton at home and stuff is something you just you need to work on. You need to win those games. They're the games you must win. And it's not happening for us at the minute. We only seem to be beating the teams at the bottom, which is great. You know, it'll, it'll keep you up. But I want to push for some sort of Europe spot, like Europa League. And you've got to beat those teams around that sort of, you know, that sort of level. Yeah, of course. And I mean, you've had a taste of Champions League football now, haven't you? So I guess <laughs> maybe not Champions League again, but certainly Europa League is is something that's realistic for a club of less to the size. There's no doubt about that. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, Lee, is what are your thoughts on Claude Puel? Because I know he got quite a bit of stick towards the end of last season. I actually came up to Leicester uh, for our penultimate away game, I think it was, last season. Um, and yeah, we, we beat you, didn't we? You did, you did. And then I had to drive all the way back and my <laughs> mate who I'd come with decided that he'd fall asleep five minutes into the journey and it wasn't nice, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, in terms of Claude Puel's time at Leicester City, what do you make of him? Because I rated him really highly when he took the job. I thought he'd done a great job at Southampton, was really unfortunate to have been sacked. It, yeah, his, no his story... His story, pure story, it's it's all about being boring. That's the problem. Um, if you go through all the fans' comments from Southampton and and even probably Leicester City as well, uh, you'll see it's all about boring, boring, boring. It's very, I don't, it's hard to explain, but um, I think what's happened with Leicester fans in general is because we'd won the league um, and it was very exciting stuff, you know, counter-attacking style football is exciting. Uh, because you know, although you don't get a lot of possession, you just you know you you fly out like RAF jets, pew, 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 and you know all atta- all all attack mode. Uh, you know, and and that's I think for the last few years, Leicester fans have got a lot of that. But there's a time where things have to change, and I think that that's where the problem starts is because fans don't want change all the time, do they? No, that's right. And. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and Mr. Puel uh, brings a lot of change. He's he likes playing from the back. If you look at any of the Leicester's probably corners, uh, defending wise, probably in the last ten games now, we've defended from the back, as in all eleven men are in the box, and we play out. Now, at first, I was ridiculing that, and I was calling it, and I was shouting and screaming from the stands. You know what? You know what you're doing. You know you need Jamie Vardy at the top, waiting for it or something. But but you know what? I, I bit my words, mate. I, cho- I chewed on my own word because although we lost the game, the goal we scored at the weekend just before the international break came from a defensive corner. Uh, we just out. We just played from the back, uh, a few one two two one twos, uh, and Ricardo got a goal. So I don't know. Maybe he's starting to work. You know, he's got James Madison, he's got Demai Gray, he's got Ben Chilwell, he's got Harry Maguire. These players have turned into England international players under Pure. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right. And for me, he's a very underrated manager. I think. You know what you're going to get with him. I think a mid-table finish is guaranteed with him. I don't think you'll push on any further, but I don't think you'll get any worse. So for me, Claude Puel is a stable Premier League manager, and, and, and I think he gets a little bit too much criticism at times. Because you know what? Like you said, sometimes his football can be construed as boring, but he gets results, doesn't he? I mean, yeah. Lee, how do you expect Leicester to set up at the Emirates? Would you expect to see more of that counter-attacking style um, that they famously won the Premier League title with? I know 
Jamie Vardy's caused us problems historically at the Emirates. What do you expect? <laughs> well, well, it's a good question because you're talking about the uh, the counter attacking style of Leicester back, you know, when we won the league and stuff. But remember that we still lost to you guys that season twice. You did the double on us home and away. Yeah, I, I remember. So even though it was unstoppable, uh, you know, you guys stopped us. Yeah, I mean, I remember celebrating that Danny Welbeck last minute. Oh, that was, if, yeah, as if yeah. Won you, the you felt like you'd won the league. That was so bad, man. You don't do that. Don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, no, g- genuinely, I think it was one of those things where we thought, you know, Leicester aren't going to do it. Come on, let's be serious. You know, this is our opportunity, yeah. first time in years that we can go on and win this. And of, of course, we capitulated, but... Thankfully, Tottenham didn't win it either. So that's the- yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, who came third and two was race Tottenham F in Hotspur. Not just us that don't like them, eh? <laughs> uh, dear. All, all jokes aside, Spurs are still a good side as well. You know, you know they've got some good players, so I'm not knocking them. Yeah, I, 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 I knock them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get any good words about Spurs from me, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, oh Lee, what's your, what's your prediction then for next week? It's a Monday night. A lot of people don't like Monday night games. I like them because... No, I don't. Look forward to. Yeah, it's true, but I, I, don't enjoy, I don't enjoy Monday night football, to be honest. Um, but... Uh, the actual game itself, I, I can still see you guys. I'd love to beat you guys down there. It's been a few. There's been a few roller coaster matches. You're talking about the Danny Welbeck last minute sort of goal that ruined it down your ground. And then was it the opening of the season last year? Yeah, that's right. Where you, there was a, like a comeback special, weren't it? And you, you beat us again. I just want to nick three points from you guys at your ground. It would be be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't see it happening. Now, we're on a hot streak at the moment, so... Uh, I can't see it happening at all. Well, you don't know. It's coming off the back of the international break. You just don't know, do you? You've got a few players uh, that are back as well. And, yeah, you've got Messi Rosa who's back in training. And you've got... Uh, is it the keeper, check? Is he injured or something still? Is he coming yeah, back? Checks out. Leno will be in goal, yeah. Um, we've only really got Wes Morgan out from the red card, so Pure's going to have to change his, uh, his defensive lineup. Um, I can imagine he's going to go maybe three at the back uh, and Chilwell and Ricardo as wing backs um, and probably Madison in the middle, Vardy and Inacio up top. Okay, interesting. Lee, give us a score. Give us a score. Put your neck on the line. Give us a score. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go Jamie Vardy to score first uh, <laughs> and shock you all and then you come back again as usual uh, probably 2-1 okay am I going to put a bet on that seeing as I've heard it from <laughs> Jamie Vardy himself <laughs> <laughs> lovely Lee do you want to just quickly tell our listeners a little bit about what you guys do as well and how they can follow you and keep up with you on social media yeah, of course. Um, so we're uh, 100% LCFC. Uh, we, you can follow us at 100 LCFC on Facebook and on Twitter uh, and visit LeicesterFanTV.com. Um, sometimes from competitions and we've got some uh, phone cases as well that we do uh, for all clubs, not just Leicester. And there's a discount code on that as well, which is nostalgiacases.co.uk forward slash 100 LCFC. Uh, I'm Lee Chapman uh, I'm on Channel 4's series Lookalikes uh, Series 2 on all four and I was featured on The Real FFS on Friday The Real Football Fan Show with Robbie Lyle one of your own (laughs) Good stuff we'll be sure to check that out Lee thank you very very much for taking time out of your evening to join me and uh I would say good luck, but I don't really mean it, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't even tell me your predictions, mate. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, I think Arsenal are going to win. And, uh, you know, I, I've been predicting Arsenal to win for the past few weeks now because I feel like there's a real feel good factor around the club at the minute. Um, yeah. I think, you know, in front of our own fans, I think we'll have a bit too much. And don't get me wrong, Arsenal have their defensive issues and, and I'm not by any means suggesting that you guys won't score. I think you probably will. But for me, I think in terms of firepower, Arsenal just have too much at the moment. Lacazette or Bamiyang are both firing. The likes of Iwobi's playing well. You know, Mkhitaryan's yeah. played well when he's coming. Ozil's back, like you mentioned. So I just think Arsenal will probably have a little bit too much. But I don't think we'll, we'll blow you away. I, I'm going to go with a 2-0 win, I think. 
it's, it's always a good goal. It's always a good game between these two sides. That's one guaranteed thing you've got if you check back on the results and stuff, the previous fixtures. You have a look at the, the score lines and the, the goals and the games. It's always an exciting match between Arsenal and Leicester for the last few years now. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it either way. Yeah, fingers crossed we see a cracker. Lee, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Harry. That brings us to the end of another preview show. Uh, my thanks to Lee Chappie and, of course, our sponsors, Loserpool. Do head over to loserpool.com because they've got a really exciting game going on this week. It's a special. It's a thousand pounds in the pot. And all you've got to do is enter with two pounds initially. It'll be two pounds each time you progress. But there's a chance to win a thousand pounds just for picking the loser in the Premier League. It's, it's a really great game. It's a really great concept. Um, and you know, if you fancy yourself as a, as a bit of a footballing uh, guru, then you know it's easy money, really. So head over there, loserpool.com, um, and do please get involved. Um, I'll be playing this week as well. So looking forward to uh, taking you guys on. I'm not gonna give you my loser of the week just in case you copy me and, and end up beating me uh, so you know um yeah do check it out do check it out don't forget to subscribe to us on youtube now we're also on youtube we've been putting our podcast on there recently we've been getting a, a pretty good response so thank you to all of you and of course we're available in all the usual places itunes soundcloud uh acast uh fnx uh, stitcher um so yeah until uh, Wednesday next week, we'll be back a little bit later, seen as Arsenal are playing on the Monday. We'll be back on Wednesday to review this uh, Leicester City game. Until then, au revoir. Meet our hero. He's a smart guy who loves sports and loves outwitting other people. Our hero needs to show the world his mastery of the game. Our hero does this by playing games at loser pool. Our hero is you. Loserpool has two games. In the namesake, the games of an entire season are grouped together into weeks or rounds. After paying an entry fee, you choose one team to lose that week or round. If you're correct, you earn the right to repeat the process in the next round. But the catch is that you cannot choose a team a second time until all the teams have been chosen by you once. If you're knocked out early, you may re-enter the same pool by paying a penalty to make it fair for the other players. Or you may wait until the next pool starts in a few weeks. Razor Pool is similar to Loser Pool in that the games of an entire season are grouped together. But in this case, you pay the entry fee and predict the outcome of all the games in that week or round. You will be ranked against all other players according to your accuracy. And at the end of each round, a predetermined percentage of players will be eliminated. There is no option to buy back into a pool if you are eliminated, <laughs> and so you will have to wait until the next pool starts to play again. In both games, the prize money grows very rapidly. The pool is allocated to the last man standing, or to add a little drama, to a small surviving group if they vote according to predetermined rules. Loser Pool is about community, friendship, fun and rivalry. Discuss and debate the games and events of the week with players from around the world. Invite your friends and co-workers into your own sub-pools and see who can outsmart the group and earn bragging rights. This is your moment. Create an account. Show your sports genius. Be the hero.